hey, what's good fam? So this week, I've been getting asked a lot about the SP404 Mark II's new TR Rec step sequencer and how to make it swing and like humanize the rhythmic feel. So in this video, I'm going to make a quick little drum loop and walk you through my approach. To keep it simple, I've just got these three drum samples. My hat, my kick, my snare, and I'm going to be making this drum pattern. To start, let's go into pattern select, hit record, select a pad, I'm going to do just one bar, and here where it says mode real time, when you hit remain, and now it says TR rec, which is the step sequencer. Now this is the drum pattern I'm going to be recording. You can see under each row I've written the numbers 1 through 16 to represent each of the 16 steps of my one bar pattern. And I've color coded the kick blue, which will play on steps 1, 4, and 11, the snare green, which will play on steps 5 and 13, and the hi-hats yellow, which will be playing on 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15. Before I start complicating things with my drunken swing feel, I'm going to enter in the pattern without swing so you can first see what the basic process looks like. So to start the step sequencer, I hit record, and I want to record the kick first, so hold down sub pad and select it. So turn velocity up to 127, and like I said, 1, 4, and 11. Next, the snare. So hold down sub pad, select the snare pad. And 5 and 13. Lastly, the hats. Select the hats. And there, and there. Okay, so that's the basics. Now to program it in again, but this time mess with the swing. So pattern select, record, select a pad, one bar, it's on TR rec, and hit record. Like before, I'm gonna hit the kick, put it at 127. All right, so when you hold down shift, you can see it says shuffle and start. Now I'm not going to be messing with shuffle, but I will be using start and when you use control three to turn it to clockwise, as the numbers go up, the later the sample will play from where you program it. As you go anti-clockwise, get into the negative numbers, the drum will play early. So if you want something to swing later, you put it around there or something, right? But first I'm going to start at 0% because there's a few things I want to have on the grid. For starters, the first kick, always want that on the grid. Next, select the snare, the last snare of the bar, I want that on the grid too. And this is kind of like a way to make sure that no matter how crazy you get with all the other drums, moving them around, the loop will always loop cleanly and it should work out. So the next snare, I'm going to hold down shift, and something about that to make the snare play early. And uh, next, let's get the rest of the kicks. So select the kick again. And uh, the kick that goes on four, let's push that forward about 30%. And then we got the kick to go on step 11. Let's bring that back to say about that. So you can kind of feel that's a little bit more loose. Let's start working on the hats. So I'm going to set these back to zero because this will help also keep everything in time because you've got the first one hitting in time. This one hits just after the snare. And then this one's kind of like a halfway point which you want to have clean. But this snare where it's in time, I'm going to push this to about that. So you can hear it just kind of flams after the snare. It arrives a little bit after the snare, which I think is a cool sound. And it's also what it's doing on this one. All right, so next we're gonna do this column of hi-hats. And uh, the first thing is I'm gonna drop down the velocity to 50 so we get a bit more of a bounce. I'm gonna have this one come in a little bit early. So it sounds like when I, if I was, the 
playing it live like I was rushing to start with. This one I'm going to have slightly late, say about seven. This one I'm going to swing heaps. Let's throw this like something in the 60s. That's cool. And this one just less, so something in the 40s, so like 41. Righto, so that's a quick, simple example of what can be done to booze up your grooves. Let's, uh, let's listen to the two and compare them. So the first one, the straight one. And the drunk one. And then let's put that into context. Let's put like a loop behind it. Alright, so you can sort of see how that works and the numbers I used, they weren't nothing special. You just do whatever you think feels cool and experiment. I'm curious what you guys think of the new stuff that the version 2 firmware update has brought to the table. So let me know down in the comments what you guys think. As always, thanks heaps for watching. Laters.